So there's a new video making the rounds from a YouTube channel called Plant-Based Science London. And the headline? Important study finds new deficiency in plant-based eaters. Oh no, big scary font, blood vials, full-on DEFCON 1. If you're vegan, they say you better start tracking your protein intake, counting every gram of lysine and leucine, or else. Or else what? Are you going to collapse into a pile of amino acid deficient rubble? It sounds ridiculous, but that's the tone. Serious panic, alarm bells, and even some vegan influencers are now echoing it, warning that you need to start monitoring your protein intake obsessively. But is this really what the science says? Are long-term vegans actually at risk of wasting away? Or is this just another round of nutrition fear-mongering? Let's take a breath. Let's break this down properly because the study they're talking about and the headlines being spun from it tell a very different story than the panic machine would have you believe. Today, we're going to look at what the study really said, whether vegans are actually at risk, and what the real science on protein and longevity tells us. And finally, why this protein panic keeps coming back, even though the data doesn't support it. Here's the actual study that they're panicking about. A team of researchers in New Zealand looked at about 193 long-term vegans. They checked their food diaries and calculated protein and amino acid intake. What did they find? About three quarters met total protein requirements, but when they adjusted for digestibility, about half met lysine and leucine targets. And that's it. They, that's the big deficiency that they're claiming. But here's the thing, and what they're not telling you, no one was sick, no one had muscle loss, no sarcopenia, no frailty. These were healthy long-term vegans with better than average BMIs than the non-vegan public. But don't just take my word from it. Let's hear from one of the world's top nutritional scientists, Dr. Christopher Gardner from Stanford. Should we all be worrying about getting enough protein? No. Simple, clear, direct. No, no need for anyone to worry about protein. Instead of explaining that clearly, plant-based science, London hits the panic button. Deficiency, alarm, danger, all based on a number on a chart, not based on health outcomes. There's no evidence that these healthy, active vegans were suffering from low lysine or leucine intake, but fear sells, panic spreads. And in case you're still hearing that old myth that plants aren't complete proteins, back to the top nutrition scientist, Dr. Christopher Gardner from Stanford. Basically, you, I'm, I'm going to take one big step back and say, if you've eaten enough calories for the day, you got enough protein. Just so stop obsessing about protein. Protein's in everything. All 20 amino acids are in all plant foods. Big myth to bust here. All 20 amino acids, all in plants, no obsession required. So where did these protein targets even come from? Who decided how much you need, how much lysine and leucine in the first place? Well, here's Dr. Gardner once again, explaining the history of how these FDAs were actually designed. So this happens in protein and all the vitamins and minerals, Jonathan. So when the US comes up with recommended daily allowances for protein, vitamins and minerals, the standard approach is to take two standard deviations above the average and in mathematical terms, that means you've picked a number that should be adequate for 97.5% of the population. And there might be a couple people in the tail that need even higher than that, but it would be so few that you're pretty safe recommending that amount. Now, not only is that amount adequate, but another math thing to keep in mind here is if really everybody in the US or the UK, wherever, got exactly that 97.5% two standard deviations higher, how many would be exceeding their requirement? Oh, actually, like 97%. <laughs> so the RDAs are set high by design. The numbers are already padded intentionally, and most people are eating double of that. Anyway, this study is about pushing products, not protecting health. Meanwhile, let's talk about real-world health. The longest-lived people ever studied the Okinawans, their average protein intake, 39 grams a day, way below what plant-based science London and most YouTube nutrition bros are telling you to eat. No protein shakes, no lysine tracking. And guess what? They outlived almost everyone else on the planet. They didn't hit their protein numbers, but they did hit 100 years of life. And they weren't just low on protein. According to RDA standards, they were deficient in a dozen different vitamins and minerals. Guess what? They still live longer, healthier lives than nearly everyone else on Earth. So why does this message keep coming back? 
because fear sells. Protein powders sell. Amino acid supplements sell. Apps to track your food intake sell. But telling you, hey, you're probably fine eating whole plants, that doesn't make anybody rich. Here's Dr. Gardner again on all those so-called high-protein products lining store shelves. The final point was almost anything that says like extra high protein on it or, you know, a bar or a shake or any of these things are just really bad for you. Don't eat them. And I think, Christopher, your message is eat beans instead. Yep. Eat beans instead. Well, that doesn't fund influencers. That doesn't pay for flashy YouTube ads, but it does keep you healthy. So again, was there any evidence of harm in this New Zealand vegan study? No. Any evidence of health problems, muscle loss, frailty? No. What did the study actually find? It found healthy long-term vegans with great BMIs, eating whole foods, living well. The panic? It's all noise. It's marketing. It's not science. Now, here's the part the panic crowd never talks about, because while they're busy warning you that you're not hitting your lysine number, they're ignoring the actual science on what helps humans live longer. Let's talk about Dr. Walter Longo and Dr. Luigi Fontana, two of the world's leading researchers on longevity and aging. What do they say about protein? They say protein restriction, especially animal protein, lowers IGF-1, reduces cancer risk, and may extend lifespan. We're not just talking about total pro protein. We're talking about specific amino acids like methionine and leucine, the same ones plant-based science London wants you to panic about not getting enough of. If you restrict leucine, you can live longer. So why are they telling you that you need more? Methothionine restriction Leucine restriction, BCAA restriction, these aren't fringe ideas. This is serious peer-reviewed science published in top medical journals on aging and cancer prevention. In animal models, protein restriction, even without calorie restriction, has been shown to dramatically extend lifespan and improve metabolic health. And in human observational studies, lower protein intake is consistently associated with lower IGF-1 levels, reduced cancer risk, and better long-term outcomes. In fact, in one of his reviews, Dr. Longo specifically warns against high protein intake because too much protein can accelerate the aging process. And what kind of diet does Longo recommend? A largely plant-based diet, low in protein, especially low in animal protein. Don't let this nonsense from Plant-Based Science London distract you from the basics. Eat whole plants, move your body, live your life, no nutrient tracking required, no fear required. Okay, that's it. Like, subscribe, share if this helped you cut through the noise and stay skeptical, stay healthy, and I'll see you on the next one.